All right, we live in a world which is constantly bombarding us with information. The algorithm, maybe you've noticed this obvious targeted ads that we see on our phones, on our computers. It's because the computer processing all of your data knows exactly what to spit out on the other end, what you like, where you probably want to go next. All that is becoming automated. And it can be annoying sometimes while you scroll, scroll through Twitter or any other website that you might use, but the University of Idaho is using this type of data analysis to find solutions for real world problems. Look at this. This right here, any idea what this might be? Well, it's a compilation of data at a Virginia a vineyard. It's telling us every detail about the weather, the soil conditions, anything you want to know about what's happening right now in this spot. And graduate students at Idaho's Robotics Center designed and installed the whole system. It's just the initial step toward their long-term project. And they want to find the most efficient ways to farm. It was all sparked with an unlikely partnership on the other side of the country. Here's Andrew Bartline. There's people who want to be different for the sake of being different. But there's other reasons not to follow the crowd, including Jacqueline Mommen. <laughs> no. <laughs> She's just looking for something more. Sometimes I wish I was a little bit more scared, but I guess that's my problem. <laughs> Jacqueline owns a 100-acre vineyard in Virginia focused on working smarter, not harder. Our goal is to not use synthetic inputs. To do that, we decided that we had to make really start smart planting decisions and start there. Start because the vineyard doesn't have vines yet. So we bought a forest and then we cleared 100 acres to make way for this vineyard project. And sometimes I think my greatest strength is that I've never been a farmer because I have no preconceived notions of what it should be or what my father did or what my mother did. Jacqueline's a teacher by trade. History, U.S. history, world history, economics. Now turned student with a scientific approach. Our major problem in Virginia is humidity. What's the best weapon you have against humidity? Wind. She bought weather stations from a small company who happened to employ an Idaho computer science professor, John Chovic. And as soon as I understood the entire problem, it was a perfect project for the university. So data to outcomes. That's the whole purpose of this. Idaho robotic grad students created a new system. It's to monitor soil, temperature, moisture, sunlight, wind, all the relevant variables documented and reported in real time. We're talking about thousands of sensors here, not 10, not 20, but thousands of sensors. Thousands tested, thousands designed, thousands installed, all by vandals from Idaho. It's amazing. It's exactly where I hope to be when I, you know, you write those crazy college entrance essays. The data is an investment for Jacqueline. Lots of vineyards actually end up having to pull out vines year after year after 10 years because they made mistakes when it came to planting because they just didn't have the data. Our goal is to have vines that can live 100 years. It's a different way to do things, but she's used to that. Oftentimes, if it rains and you have muddy conditions, you can't drive with a tractor. But if you're seeding and you're spraying compost teas with a drone, you really don't have to worry about that. But I do find often that when people ask me about my vision for my farm and I tell them, I immediately get a, a defensive reaction, which is interesting because I'm just telling them about what I'm doing. I'm not, I understand that change is hard, that people have kids to pay for and food that they have to buy. So so jumping off a horse that you at least know is working is scary. Professor Shovik says he wants to bring this to Idaho, specifically Idaho's wine country in our neck of the woods in southern Idaho. This technology has a wide range of use in agriculture. That includes apple orchards, but it also has use outside of agriculture, which I admit, Brian, I didn't fully understand entirely when I spoke with him, okay. these people are a lot smarter than me. That's probably not a secret to you. <laughs> um, but it makes sense for someone like Jacqueline to where she doesn't want to use a lot of synthetic inputs is what she says, whether it's pesticides and things okay. like that. Well, if you're going to do that and be successful, a lot of the times you need to know the best possible route, how you should line up your rows on your vineyard, where is the most wind coming from, things like that. If she has all that data, well, it's going to help her be able to do that most successfully. I mean... Dumb old farmers, that kind of went out the window a long time ago, but this is amazing. I mean, why, yeah, she said, why be afraid of change when there's so many possibilities this opens up to yeah. when you do this kind of stuff? Yeah, and she says a lot of times, like, 
people who've been doing it for a long time. They learn from their mother, from their father. Or they're kind of stuck in a rut, stuck in their ways. And she's like, it's no different to me. I'm just going to do what I think is the most interesting, what I think works best. And that's the path she's going down. Idaho's helping her with it. That's awesome. And it's, it's good to see Garrett Wells doing some good stuff. I coached that kid playing soccer years wow. ago. And now he's doing... Oh, You're old. I'm old. We'll be right back.